Hi everyone, Mr. Lee here. In this video, we are going to do the graphical analysis of Newton's second law. Okay, so what that means is if we were to do a lab and we are using Newton's second law, f equals m a, and we were to graph it, what do the different parts of the graph mean? All right, let's get started. So let's say we we did a we did a lab and we got data that looks something like this. So for a given force, the object had this acceleration. Okay, um, and I'm just going to make up the data for our example. Let's say when you apply a force of one, um, we'll say it's one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. All right. So when we apply a force of one Newton, the object accelerates at one meters per second squared. A force of two newtons, the object's acceleration is two meters per second squared, and so on. All right, so we now have this data, and let's say we were to graph it. Okay, we graph it, and we get something that looks like this. So we have force there, and we have acceleration here. Okay, and we get pretty much a linear graph like so. You plot it into your 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 program and we get something like this all right that's good but take it a step further we want to create a line of best fit and lo and behold da, da, da. luckily for us this is a linear line and we like that we like linear lines okay and so if i were to ask you students what does the slope represent for a force versus acceleration graph I should put that up there. It's a force versus acceleration graph. What does it represent? Okay, uh, and this could be like a question on like graphical analysis or your quiz or you know, wherever you might come across this question. In order to answer this, we're going to use the techniques that we use in the graphical analysis video. So we have y equals mx plus b. Okay, and the reason why we have this is because we always want to analyze graphs as if it were in a line. We like lines. We don't like anything curvy. We like the lines. Okay. And I take a look here and I say, all right, what is my y-axis? My y-axis is my force. Um, remember, this m does not represent mass, but rather this m represents the slope. And that's what we're looking for. What is the slope? All right. So we don't know that yet. So I'm going to just put a line there. It's an indicator. Next question is, what does this x represent? Right, And that's our x-axis. And so for our graph, our x-axis is the acceleration. Now, just to show you visually, how I did that, I'm going to box this. So the y-axis is the force, and the x-axis is the acceleration. All right. And luckily for us, our intercept was zero, so we're not even going to even worry about that. So what does the slope represent? OK, so if you're thinking to yourself, you're screaming the answer at me, Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee, I, I had the answer. Well, you know, before we get there, the answer might be obvious. But we should know the technique. Um, and the technique is we got to compare this to the equation that we're using for this lab, which is f equals ma. So I'm just going to do a little checkbox. We have the force. We have the acceleration there and there. And so the last thing that we have is the mass. Now, these two m's might look similar, but the m up here, that's in the point slope. So that represents slope. But this mass, it represents, or this m represents our mass in kilograms. Okay, so if I were to ask you for a force versus acceleration graph, what does the slope represent? You all would answer the slope represents our mass in kilograms. So we can see that during the lab, we had a constant slope. So we had a constant mass, all right? And what this data shows us is as we applied a force on this mass, we got whatever acceleration it was okay that the data gave us so that's how you use the point slope formula let's try another one All right sometimes it's not always that clear cut so we did force versus acceleration but what about force versus mass All right and then we'll do the same thing right we get we get data 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 and we get a graph that looks something like this um mass is in kilograms Right, we get data, 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 and we plug that in, and we get boom, we get something like that. Okay, or we can get like let's say we also did, um, we got something like this as well. All right, so this is like two different data sets. I just want to show you this because 
might be showing a lot of positive slopes, so I'll show you a negative slope. All right, so we get something like that. Okay, so this is like, I don't know, uh, this is like group one, group one got this, and let's say group two got this. All right, so we have group one and group two, and the question is, what does the slope represent? All right, now you might be finding the trends here, and that's great, because you know physics and math is all about the, the patterns, but just in case, I will also explain it. So we have the point slope formula, y equals mx plus b. I take a look at my graph. What is the y axis? And that would be the force. Okay, I'm gonna leave a little space right here for my mass. I'm gonna indicate that with a underscore right there. Uh, next question is, what is my x axis? I take a look at my graph. My x axis is the mass. Remember, don't get confused. This m up here, this represents slope, and this mass in our equation represents mass. Okay, all right. And therefore, the only missing variable is, well, you might be screaming at your computer screen right now, but just in case, I'll show you. The equation is f equals ma. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to swap these two positions. Okay. Oh, I don't know why we made an alien right there. All right. So we're going to swap these two variables to get f is equal to a times m. And lo and behold, f, f, m, m. Therefore, the acceleration is the mass. Okay, so I'm gonna box that. The y-axis is the force, the x-axis is the mass, therefore the acceleration is the slope. And so we can see here that uh, during group one's uh, trials and their, their lab, they found a positive acceleration. Okay, a constant positive acceleration and group two when they did their data they found group two found a negative acceleration now just as a reminder remember negative does not mean slow it just means that it's speeding up in the negative direction and we know it's speeding up um, because the or excuse me it's just accelerating the negative direction all right now this is nice right we have lines there and lines there but unfortunately that won't always be the case and we had to do a special technique called linearization. We have to be able to linearize. This is so very important. All right, so if I want to linearize, so we did a combination of f versus m, we did a combination of f versus a, and now we're going to see how mass versus acceleration is uh, it will look like. Okay, so for this one, I'm not going to make up the data, or I'm not going to do what I did earlier. Um, we're gonna still make it up, but we're going to actually do the math behind it. So let's say in this lab, okay, we have different masses. So let's say we have a mass of, of um, one, a mass of two kilograms. These are all in kilograms. Always have your units, meters per second squared. We have a mass of three, a mass of four, a mass of five, okay? And so that's like, let's say we have a block, right? We have a block on a table. And we apply, we apply a constant force. And let's say for in this example, we apply a constant force of 10 newtons. Okay, we're constantly pushing the block with 10 newtons of force. And we want to see what the acceleration is like using a device called a accelerometer. Um, now accelerometers, they do a lot. Uh, you have accelerometers in your phone. So if you ever wonder, so like if you have a phone that's upright and you're watching YouTube videos, but then you you know, you turn your phones on the sides and the YouTube video automatically goes from an upright video to a sideways video. The reason behind that is because of this thing called an accelerometer. It detects that your phone accelerated and is able to fix itself. Anyways, um, let's say we apply a force of 10 newtons on these masses and we found the acceleration thanks to an accelerometer. All right, so let's figure out the accelerations. So if we have the equation F equals MA um, with a mass of one, with a force of 10, our acceleration would be good, 10. Uh, we have a force of 10 with a mass of two. Our acceleration would be good, five. A force of 10, a mass of three. The acceleration would be good, 3.33, repeating. If we have a mass of four and a force of 10, the acceleration would be 2.5. If we have a mass of 5 and a force of 10, we will have an acceleration of 2. All right. So here we have our data set. Okay. And if we get this data set, I'm going to leave a I'm going to leave a space right there. If we have our data set and we're to graph it. So let's say we have mass up here 
and we have our acceleration down here. Okay, um, let's say we have, so I'm graphing my data. So this is mass one, acceleration will be out here at 10. We have mass two, the acceleration is at five. So halfway between zero and 10, so right there. Uh, mass of 3, 3.33, like right around there. Uh, mass of 4, 2.5, so that's like right there. A mass of 5, and we got something like this. All right, so this is my my sketch. And we were to create a line of S fit. We will get this beautiful, beautiful curve like this. So nice. Okay, now this is nice and all. However, this is not a linear line. And so we have to use the special technique called linearization. Let me show you how. We are going to use the point slope formula. Y is equal to M X plus B. Okay. And we can see that uh, in our Y axis, we have mass. Our X axis, we have acceleration. All right. And we know that somewhere in here is like a variation of force. Okay, I'm not going to write down the force though because um, we need to double check ourselves. We know, we know that the equation for Newton's second law is F equals ma, right? We know that. Actually, let me let me write this down here. We know that the equation for Newton's second law is F equals ma. So what we have to do is we have to rearrange Newton's second law so that it somewhat matches what we have here. Okay, now. I see that I have mass on the left-hand side of the equation. In this equation, I have mass on the right-hand side of the equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move mass to the other side. And we do that mathematically by dividing both sides by mass. So if I do that, I get F divided by M is equal to mass and mass cancel acceleration. All right, so did I achieve what I wanted? Is mass on the left-hand side? The answer is yes. Cool. I see here that acceleration is on the right-hand side. Okay, Is acceleration on the right-hand side of the equation? Yes, it is. So that's good. All right. Now, we know that in this slot, we need force. But currently, force is on the left-hand side of the equation. So in order for me to move force from the left-hand side of the equation to the right-hand side of the equation, I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 divided by force, also known as just dividing each side by the force. Okay, But I'm going to show you why I wanted to do it this way. So if I do this mathematically, the force in the numerator and the force in the denominator, they cancel out, leaving with, on the other side, 1 divided by m is equal to a times 1 over f. All right, now let's go back to the point slope formula. We have a variation of mass on the left-hand side, check. We have a variation of acceleration on the other side, check. We have a variation of force on the other side, check. So if I were to rewrite this information down, I would say that mass isn't just there, it's actually one over the mass, because that's what we did mathematically with Newton's second law. Where the slope should be, we want one over F. Where the acceleration is, well, nothing changes with acceleration. So here we have the linearized, this is the linearized version of Newton's second law based on our data. Okay, so what does this mean for us? So I'm going to go back to our data. I'm going to go back to our data. What this means is for every mass value, we want to do 1 divided by the mass. Okay, all right. So if I were to do that, um, I'm going to continue here, right, just so that we have all of our stuff in one place. So uh, we're doing one divided by the mass. So one divided by one gives you, by the way, this is one over mass. One divided by one gives me one. One divided by two gives me 0 0.5. One divided by three gives me 0 0.33. One divided by four, gives me 0 0.25. 1 divided by 5 gives me 0 0.2. Okay, so with this uh, technique, we now have more linearized data. So if we were to plot these data points, OK, 
Okay, I could I could do it as for us here. My y-axis, according to this formula, okay, my y-axis is now one over m. So that would be one divided by the kilograms. And my x-axis is, well, it's just a for acceleration, so meters per second squared. Okay. Um, all right, so let's do this. For one, my acceleration, I'm looking at this right here, this combination. For one, my acceleration is still 10, so I'm going to put that all the way out here. This is 10. Uh, for 0.5, oh boy, this would be, oh, yeah, 0.5, it'll be right around here at 5. You know what? I'm going to go back because we see here, I made a classic mistake. I'm going to make the highest point 1. Okay, that way we're not all scrunched up. All right, so 1, the acceleration would be 10. Okay, 1 over 0.5, so if this value is 1, right here will be right around 0 0.5. Uh, this will be 5. So if this is 10, halfway between 0 and 10 is 5. We have 0 0.33, so let's say that's 0 0.33. Uh, this will be like 3.33. We have 0.25 right there, and that will be 2.5. So this is 5. Halfway between 0 and 5 is 2.5, and we have... 0.2 right below it, and we get something like, like that. We will get something like this. Wow. And that will give us something that's a little bit more linear. Okay. All right. So we have successfully linearized this graph. Now, if I were to ask you, students, what does the slope represent? What does the slope represent? Well, according to this equation down here, the slope is 1 over the force. Okay, so whatever that is, the slope is 1 over the force and with the units of 1 over the newtons. So this is how you are able to linearize the graph. All right, so we covered how to graph f equals m a graphs. And just in case you don't have anything that is linear, we also went over how to linearize again. Um, if you have any questions about how to linearize, remember I do have a video uh, on linearization from the previous unit. So definitely check that out. Good luck. Bye-bye.